Hello there, Galharan here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will show you step by step how I painted Jerson Derek from Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I started with two thin layers of black undercoat using Vallejo model color black paint. Pay attention to cover all the recesses and details. Now the base coat is ready, so let's move to the zenithal highlight. I used Vallejo model color white paint mixed with airbrush thinner. I chose the light direction and applied the thin layers of highlight. I wanted to paint my dress and direct in Van Helsing style, so I looked for inspiration in Google. All the movie posters had one in common, it was the green color. This way I found my first base color, which was the mix of Vallejo Black, Scorpi Green and Caliban Green from Games Workshop. I applied some highlights by adding white paint to the mix. After that I used GW most favorite shade which is Agrax Earth Shade to make the shadows even more darker. Next I painted the inside part of the coat. I used a mix of Vallejo Burnt Amber and Dark Red in ratio 2 to 1. Again I highlighted it by adding some white to the mix. Now let's move to the leather beds. As a base I used again Burnt Amber, it's a dark brown color perfect for the aged leather. Then I used US Field Drop from Vallejo as a first highlight. I proceed with highlights by adding white to the US Field Drop paint. I was wondering if non-metallic paints or true metallic paints would look better on this mini. Eventually I decided to go all in, so I used non-metallic metal. The base color is a mix of black and Andrea blue from Vallejo plus a little bit of beige brown. Unusual combination but I had the feeling it might work in the end. I covered all the metal parts and then I used black paint to increase the shadows. I highlighted the metal parts by adding Ultan Grey to the mix. The final highlights are done with pure white paint.
I use diluted midtones to make a smooth transition between colors. Take your time to make it right as a smooth blending is a key to the non-metallic metals. I keep adding Ultron Grey to the previous mix. As you will see, I will focus more and more on the edges and the most exposed parts. Here you can see the final step which is the edge highlighting with pure white. If you want to paint a very thin edge highlight, use the side of your brush. Don't use too much paint and don't water it down too much because you won't be able to control it. I keep using midtones to make the transition as smooth as possible at every step of painting non-metallic metal. Now we will paint the gloves. I use the same paints which have been already used before to keep the general feeling of the model. I mix black with Andrea Blue until I got the satisfying color. You can make the base colors even more lighter and then use some washes like Agrax Earthshade or even black. I went with dark blue color and then I highlighted the outer parts by adding initially more Andrea Blue and then some white.
This is how Jelson the Rock looks like halfway done. I already like the general atmosphere around him, but let us keep grinding and move on. I will use the already mentioned recipe for the leather elements to paint his back and other leather elements. Now I will show you why I love painting red and why it is so easy. I will use my favorite color which is the vermilion from Vallejo. I mix it with burnt amber to get the base color. After that I attacked it with pure vermilion. Red colors blend together so well so you don't have to struggle to obtain the smooth transition. The more thin layers we apply the more saturated color we get. It's very easy and simple. As a final touch I added a little bit of white to the mix for the edge highlighting. Time for some more NMM. I will use the same steps as I already mentioned to paint the silver non-metallic elements. When you paint a very tiny element using NMM, don't bother with perfect blends. In the end, it will not be visible. Just focus on the contrast between the deepest shadows and the brightest highlights. The shoulder pads and the weapons are the most visible and main elements which focus attention. So here you should try to keep your color transition as smooth as possible. As I said before, I always use mid-tones to blend colors together. It is time consuming, but in the end the effect is worth it.
slowly we are getting there. Only the gun and the base are left. Again, as you could see I will use some greens to paint the rifle. I want to keep my palette limited and green oriented but after adding some more Andrea blue I obtained kind of mint color which I quite liked. I highlighted those elements by adding white to the mix. And here it is, the model itself is finished. Unfortunately, the videos I took from the last steps are terrible, so I can't show you the last touches. But these were exactly the same steps which I already described before. I had a great fun with painting the base and the OSL effect from the candles. I got them from Green Stuff World and these tiny pieces are really amazing. I think those candles completed the wall model and created even more dark atmosphere. I have to say, I really like how he turned out in the end. Nevertheless, thank you for watching, please click the sub and the like button and see you soon.